Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Particle Illusion. The folks at Boris FX have gone through to release the brand new version of Particle Illusion and they've made the Particle Illusion 2021.5 free. So if you would like to play with this, you can actually go ahead and grab it for free and start working with it. Now the Particle Illusion 2021.5 does have a couple of things that you can play with. If you go ahead and hit the download button, it's gonna bring you right over here where you can download all of the OFX and you can also download the standalone tool. So this is also available for Windows, Mac and Linux. Now, if you go ahead and download these two tools, I would suggest that you install the particular meter so that you can have all of the necessary OFXs, all of the add-ons that you'll be needing for different editing tools. And at the same time, you'll be having access to all of the emitters that comes with this. Now, once you have that installed and also you have the particle illusion standalone version installed what you need to do is pop it open now once you open it you would notice that it looks a little bit you know new it looks a bit defined than what we used to have before and for those that haven't seen the video where we talked about this before i would strongly suggest that you check it out as this is more of an updated video of the previous one so from here is where you're going to notice all of your emitters you can actually stack them in different forms so if you just want to see some abstract emitters or maybe you want to see some backgrounds or maybe you're looking for some custom ones you can actually go ahead and check these ones here so with that said if you also go over to the section you can take a look at these and see them by setting categories or groups so you can check those ones here or probably you can go through the thumbnail section and see all of them in their glory so we can actually increase and reduce this depending on what we like so with this here how do you get started with it? So for you to get started with this, you can click, click right here, and then you can get to preview it. And at the same time, if you proceed to click right here within your viewport, you can get this loaded right within your viewport. And of course you would notice that we have a brand new node section that we can work with. So within the node section, you can actually go to individual properties and make tweaks. So let's say in this case, let's press the playback button to see what we have. So let's say in this case, we have these um, alphas being used as the particles if we select the fire right here we can go over to the property section and we can change the alpha image that is being used so we can select face for example maybe select a for example and you can do some very impressive things with this so you can select any of these ones and uh you can see this in action so once you select that and of course you want to make changes to the color you can go over to the color section maybe select any of the given colors that we have right here and you can tweak these things to your liking. Now, I love the idea that we have this nodal stuff, which makes it even way interesting, just in case you want to connect stuff. But I think this is still within its early age because you can't necessarily, you know, plug from one node to another. These things are just right here to eliminate the whole idea of layers. That is one thing I've come to find out. So it just eliminates the ideas of layers. And uh, despite the fact that it has these, ironically called layers, this just simply eliminates that. So with that said, if you would like to also preview these things and see them in true 3D, there are certain particles that actually allows you to get that true 3D feeling, but some of them don't really give you that. So for example, the one which you have here, if we click on this drop down and switch to 3D and select the spike itself and go over to the angle section and try to rotate this, and you would also notice so let's just rotate this as well so you can notice that we don't really have all of that uh, true 3d-ness okay but then if you would like to also explore 3d with different tools you can also go in and check out some of the other uh, particles that exist for example a particle like this would definitely give you some good 3d so let's uh, actually go in and push this all the way out and if we switch over to the angle and let's say we would like to rotate this you can see that we can rotate it in 3d so this looks really, really nice. So then you can go ahead and you can press the playback button and you can rotate this to fit whatever scene or whatever thing that you're working on. So at any point in time you want to make changes to this, of course you can proceed to make changes. And this doesn't limit you to the original animation uh, set of things that you can do with any of this stuff. So if you select any of them and you like to animate this, you can turn on auto key so that at any point in time, if we go over to frame 90, we can drag this all the way to this point and then if we go back, you can see that we have this sort of animation going in. Now, at any point in time you want to also make changes, you can obviously just make sure that you have your auto key turned on and you can make changes from here and proceed to do some even more amazing things. So let's say at frame 45, if we move this all the way to this point, you would notice that we have, you know, we have this going like so. And if we like to change this from a linear to a bezier, we can also change that and you can control this with the handles and the uh, 
do some more stuff so we can go back let's actually position that keyframe right there and so we can go back and go forth like this and you can see that and because this is in its own you know 3d nest so we can also rotate this and we can rotate it by a given angle and of course you can play with it see what and what you can get out of it and actually start creating some amazing and lovely stuff something else which also makes a lot of sense is if we proceed to make a new project and let's say for some reason you wouldn't want some things to uh, be in certain places so for example let's switch this back to 2d so for example if we press the playback button let's say we won't want our smoke to get to a certain point we can also use deflectors to actually push that so at this point if we add a deflector let's set this all the way to the back bounce this backwards throw in a deflector so at this point if we throw in a deflector we can deflect the smoke to a given point or to a particular point in space so if we press the playback button you'd notice that we're deflecting that smoke so if we move the deflector to a given point like so or maybe we'll position this to a point like this you would also notice that we can deflect it however we want you can play with the angle of your deflector you can play with the angle of your smoke depending on what view you're looking at those things and this can come in very very handy especially for those who might want to use a deflector to actually move particles from one position to another Something else which is also very nice, despite the fact that you have those deflectors, are the forces. Let's bring in that force right here. Make sure that we have the deflector. Let's delete that. And then once we press the playback, you would notice that the force actually starts pushing these particles to a given point. So at any point in time, we have a hold of the force. We can, you know, move it around and we can use this to do some very, very nice stuff. So depending on what you want to do, the particle emitter is right here and you have a long list of particles that you can pick from and start creating some amazing and impressive things. Now, before we go, let's talk about some very important things. So right here, we have a simple um, trail and I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. Press the playback button and of course you can see this. And if we want to animate it, just like we talked about earlier, we can select this go over to a particular frame let's say frame 60 drag this over down there and then once we go back and forth you can see this in action and so we made mention that you can switch this from 2d to 3d and we also talked about deflectors and all that stuff but then there is a camera model that you can work with so if you actually deselect everything and you go over here and you click on the drop down you can switch from position to orbit or pan so we already talked about the idea that if you select the trail itself and you click on this drop down you can make changes so let's say what the changes we would like to make is once this is going from here over to this final destination we would like to have the rotation on the y-axis so we can rotate this on the y-axis and of course you can see that happening so if we press the playback button you would probably not notice or you might notice but this actually starts spinning lovely stuff but then if you like to rotate the entire thing if you have everything deselected and you go over to your camera model, you can click on the drop down and select orbit. Now, once you select the orbit, you can choose to play with the zoom or the distance, or you can select rotation. And this is quite interesting. If you select the rotation, you can do the tumble. So this tumble will tumble everything in 3D. Very, very lovely. If you like to spin stuff, you can now spin things in 3D which is very, very impressive. So this is by far one of the coolest things I've come to notice. And, uh, you know, it's very, very nice to see. So you can tumble an entire particle system, depending on what you want to do. And you can also rotate this. So this gives you more of the true 3D-ness of the model or, you know, of the particle that you're working with, rather than just dealing with the 2D stuff. Now, with that said, if you bounce this all the way back and press the playback button, of course, because we have our keyframe turned on, you get to notice that that also animates the camera. So this is also something that you need to keep in mind and it can come in very, very handy for lots of you guys. Now, the next thing which we would like to talk about is by simply using the same smoke that we looked at earlier. So if we press the playback button and you notice that we have the smoke going, what we would like to do, let's uh, actually turn this off and send this all the way back and increase the size and press the playback one more time. So what we we'll like to look at is there's a tiny button here. Uh, actually, it's a bar, so you can drag this bar all the way out. And it's responsible for the start and the stop of your animation. So your animation timeline actually kicks in, and this bad boy here is responsible for that. 
So let's get another model or let's get another particle in and use that particle as a as an example. So I'm just going to drop this second one here. And if, for example, I would like these to start first and then I would like the second one to start, let's say, after the first 100 frame, we can position this. So you can kick things and uh, you can set certain actions in motion depending on what you want. So with that there for press the playback button, we can have that and once it gets to 100, the other one kicks in and this works for both the particle themselves deflectors and also forces and once you're done with your amazing piece you can click on file and go to the render project and actually specify all the things that you want and in terms of codec you have the open hedge 264 and also the apple pro res very amazing stuff and uh, there's one more thing if you're also thinking about the timeline duration you can go over to view go over to project setting and you can increase the timeline duration so in this case we we'll put an extra zero at the back and then click on apply and of course you can notice that right now we have 3000 frames which is a whole lot of frames for those who like to make multiple particle stuff and it's also worth mentioning that the particles you have is a lot so you have a lot and a lot of particles so if you're looking for tunnel particles maybe these are the kind of things that you want maybe your project needs something like this you can get that if you're looking for water particles. Maybe your project needs something like this. There's actually one that makes a lot of sense, which I think a lot of sci-fi guys will want. And it's actually not the sci-fi thing, but it is a heads-up display. So if you're looking for heads-up display stuff, you're definitely going to find particles that deals with that. And you can just simply plug this into your project and uh, start creating some amazing and lovely piece with it. So this is more like it. For those who would like to take a look at this, there's going to be a link in the description that will bring you right over to the Boris FX website where you can check out this and you can download and see some amazing things that you can start doing with the particle illusion. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update. And I'll see you guys again with the tutorial update free Friday tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.